The video we're looking at today is called Why Theists Should Not Take Atheists Seriously. Problem of Evil. Is this going to be another attempt to turn the problem of evil around onto atheists? We've seen that a couple of times recently. Guess we'll find out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome guys. Hello. So, you might be hearing this thing about problem of evil. Problem of evil. Uh, who's going to solve the problem of evil? An atheist, they charge us, hey, look at these guys, they have problem of evil. Okay, before we go any further, I'm gonna add some subtitles. You got a pretty strong accent, I think a lot of the audience is gonna struggle with it, I struggle with it to an extent. And I have the opportunity to take some time, listen to things two times, three times, and just listen more carefully to anything that I find hard to understand. Nobody in the audience wants to have to do that, they just want to be able to watch the video. So I'm gonna put subtitles here to the best of my ability. I think they'll be pretty accurate, uh, I don't claim 100% accuracy, but I think I'm pretty damn close. An atheist, they charge us, hey, look at these guys, they have problem of evil. You know, so what is the atheist solution to this? Uh, that a being with self-contradicting properties doesn't exist. How do the atheists solve the problem of evil? That's my question. How do they solve this problem? How do the atheists solve it? What do you mean, how do we solve it? It's not our problem. Sure, it's a problem we point out a lot of the time, but it's your problem. It's a problem with the properties of your god. If you want it solved, you solve it. Don't ask us to do it for you. Guess what? There is no evil. After, after all, at the end of the day, there is no evil. That's your solution. No, I mean, regardless of someone's opinion on evil, and of course there are many different positions on this question among atheists, I don't need a solution to a problem I don't have. I don't believe in God. The contradictions in the nature of the God I don't believe in don't matter, at least not to the viability of my position. You're talking about the problem of evil as if it's something that we share. We don't share this. This is only a problem for certain brands of theist. Don't try to spread your problems around. Indifferent, indifferentism. Nature is indifferent to all of that. It's just our concepts. I'm pretty sure indifferentism is usually used to describe the indifference to religious difference. Catholic, Protestant, whatever, Lutheran, Calvinist. It doesn't matter. It's all basically the same. We don't care. That's indifferentism. But I get what you're saying. You think that atheists just in general think morality is a human invention, which isn't true. Many atheists think it's not. So you're already premising this on two ideas that are totally wrong. One is that atheists have a problem of evil to resolve, and the other is that atheists generally resolve this problem of evil by thinking of evil as a human idea. The first one's outright false, and the second one's false too, considering it's presenting this as a response to the problem of evil we don't have. But if we take that part out, out, it's still false, at least as a universal statement about atheists. We just made them up, evil and good and all of that. It's all neutral stuff. It's indifferent. I should be clear that although I'm clarifying that this is not a general atheist position, and in fact is in no way implied by atheism, it's roughly the position I hold. I say roughly because I think that for the most part, evil and good are not made up arbitrarily. Not usually, anyway. I think there are some things people do that are arbitrarily defined as evil or good, very often within religion. But the overall concepts and the broad strokes within them, I think are a product of us just living our lives and living together and noticing what sort of behaviors cause us to have positive feelings or negative feelings, to experience pain and hardship, or to experience contentment and a sense of safety. So the labels and some of the way that they're interpreted I think are human inventions, but the prompts that push us to approve of certain things or disapprove of certain things are often very real. These aren't just cold academic ideas. They're responses to the harsh nature of reality intruding into our lives. So nature doesn't care. God who's not there doesn't care, but we sure do, which is all that really matters considering that good and evil are in relation to our behaviors and how we talk about them and act in relation to them amongst ourselves. So their critique, you should actually understand it now, is not about that they actually think there's evil in the world or there's good in the world. Ultimately, when let's say all religions are gone, what we'll be left with is there is no evil, there is no good. It's just we. We're just making a social construct. 
I strongly disagree. I think that if you listen to some atheists talk, you'll find that morality, including the concepts of good and evil, come up all the time. Having moral positions is essentially universal among humans. There can be disagreement on which ones they are, and that's not just between religious people and non-religious people, that's between all people. But yeah, if religion were to go away, the ideas of good and bad, good and evil, would not just disappear. And that's because these are not religious ideas. Sure, religion makes use of them, just like all kinds of ideologies make use of them, but they're not inventions of religion, they're not dependent on religion. Religion doesn't have a monopoly on them. People do morality extremely naturally, and they'll continue to do that whether there's a religion telling them to or not. And their ideas about the origins of morality, be that that it was dictated to them by a god, or that it's a product of human societies, or that it's a natural law of the universe, or that it's some kind of karma, or whichever other idea somebody adheres to, doesn't change the reality of human morality, and it doesn't change the fact that people will engage with human action on this level, which is why atheists don't just abandon morality. I have heard a couple people argue against terminology like evil, saying that it has too many religious connotations and we should use a better word. I disagree. I feel similarly about this as I do about the people who tell me I shouldn't use the word believe, because some idiot religious people try to equate belief with faith. No, I don't give words up to the religious that easily. I'm not gonna let them pretend like they hold a monopoly on thinking things are true or thinking things are good or bad. And I'm not gonna alter my language in a tacit admission that they in fact do. If I find them to be useful words, I will use them. And if someone wants to stupidly interpret that as some sort of religious statement on my part, that's their problem to fix. But anyway, guy, if you're gonna make another video like this talking about atheists, you should maybe listen to what some of them say first such that even if you have two communities two different communities evil can be good here and bad here. you know what i'm saying yes i know what you're saying and i'm trying to figure out how you think that's any different from how the world actually is you're a muslim i know this because you started with the muslim greeting and your channel is called african dawah revival and it says you discuss islamic related topics and in the islamic world there are many different ideas about what is allowed and what is not what is good and what is bad what's halal and what's haram the same action can be absolutely haram in one place or according to one school of thought or what have you and in another place or according to another school of thought it can be perfectly halal read some islamic history it's remarkable in this respect much like christian history and Group A will say, this action is totally forbidden, clearly God doesn't want us doing this, it's bad everywhere at all times. And Group B will say, this action is totally permissible, clearly this is what God wants, it's permissible everywhere at all times. And then maybe you have two atheists, and they both look at that same action, and one of them says, I think that action's okay. And the other one says, I think it's definitely not. I have a big problem with this. And then the Catholics come in with their own positions, and then the Orthodox come in with their own positions, and the Seventh-day Adventists, and Jewish sect A and Jewish sect B and the Hindus and how does any of this strike you as not exactly how the world works right now with religion all over the place and you might say ah but I think that this specific group has it right okay well nobody seems to be able to agree on that there seems to be no metric by which to measure this it seems like we're all just kind of coming up with our own thing based on our own experiences so what is your actual complaint what is the actual practical difference in the real world between insisting that morality must be and can only be dictated by a god, or not insisting on that. Either way, it appears to function as a product of the society it's functioning within. So ultimately, they see them as just nonsense metaphysical nonsense that we just made up. I want to reiterate, I can't speak for all atheists here, but for my part, I don't see good and evil as nonsense. I do see a lot of the assertions about what they are and what they have to be as nonsense, because I think a lot of it is totally unjustified. But the concepts themselves I don't think are nonsense at all. I think they're very, very important to our societies. I think it's very important for us to draw a line between what we'll tolerate and what we won't. Even just as a matter of the basic day-to-day -day maintenance of the society, Society, keeping it bearable to live in, keeping it relatively stable, keeping it from collapsing in on itself, keeping people from experiencing abject misery on a daily basis. The distinction between what we'll morally accept and what we won't is absolutely crucial. If we don't have the spine to do that, it can only lead to problems. So yeah, I don't think it personally makes much sense to try to 
paint these as some sort of supernatural phenomenon, and I don't really think it's the most effective approach either. I think that if you try to build your morality on a basis of bullshit, which is what's been done by trying to tie it so strongly to religious thinking, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for your entire moral system to collapse, and in fact your society to collapse, as soon as the very dubious assumptions and beliefs on which your morality is based are questioned too carefully. Aside from the fact that I just don't think that your ideas about morality are true, I also think they're strategically idiotic. So, why would you then, you know, your critique against the theist, for instance, at least we will believe there's actually real evil, okay? And people will be accountable for that. Right, right. You guys believe there's actually real evil, which brings us back to the problem of evil, which supposedly is supposed to be the topic of this video, and yet which we haven't even touched on. You believe that there's real, objectively real, evil in the world. Can we talk about how this relates to the nature of your god and whether it's consistent with the nature of your god? I'm pretty used to dealing with Christians. I have dealt with Islam to some extent, of course, but Muslims do have a bit of a different idea about their god as it relates to questions like this, so it actually would be really nice to get into what you think about your god and whether you think it's consistent with the evil that you see in the world. Are we going to do that or are we just going to say atheists are all moral relativists and they don't think evil's a real supernatural thing? Which seems like just a diversion from the point. So if someone does evil, we believe they'll be accountable for it. Okay, great. Well, all societies on the planet have some way of trying to hold people accountable for their actions. I don't believe in heaven or hell, so I don't think that people are going to be held accountable in that way for it. Boo-hoo. I mean, there's always this thing that comes up of, but what if they get away with it? Then they got away with it. Too bad, so sad. What are you going to do, cry about it? I'm not going to make up some mythological system of rewards and punishments as a gigantic cope against the idea that some people might do bad things and not get punished. How would that even help us in the real world anyway? Wouldn't that make you less likely to want to hold people accountable in this life? Yeah, he did a bad thing, but, you know, he's going to get punished by God, so, eh. Yeah, he did a good thing, but he's going to get rewarded by God, so, eh. No, in my worldview, the only place and time to hold somebody accountable is here and now. I don't have the excuses that this type of religion provides to ignore this responsibility. And you know, I think Islamic position just solves this. Maybe Christians believe this too, but Islamic position on this thing is that Ah, this life of the life of this world is a test. Oh good, we're finally getting into the excuses for the actual problem of evil now. Okay, so life is a test. Well, the purpose of one person administering a test to someone else is for the person administering the test to find out something about the other person that they don't already know. That's the entire purpose. There is no other purpose to a test. So what is it that God doesn't know? about you? What is it that he has to test you to find out? I always thought this god was supposed to know everything, in Islam as well as Christianity. I thought attributing ignorance to him would be a big no-no here, but apparently he's ignorant about everyone. Every single person. He's got no clue what type of character they have, so he's got to give them a test to figure it out. Very interesting. So, all the evil, all the good you see around you, all of that stuff, is about to test you. Okay? Okay, if you want to try to resolve the problem of evil by saying God's an ignoramus, I guess that's one approach. Of course, whether he's omniscient or ignorant, I don't think administering weird sadistic tests is really something that a beneficent, merciful, loving God would do. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Wadud, the beneficent, the merciful, the loving. So it does seem to me that you have the problem of evil the same way the Christians do, and shrugging and saying, eh, it's a test, doesn't really help. So you'll be hungry, and then you have food. Will you be grateful? Okay? You will lose loved ones. Would you still believe? Right, and this is what I'm talking about. You're a little lab rat in this scientist's box. And he's like, hey, little rat, I'm going to starve you for a while and then give you food. Are you going to be grateful about it? Hey, little lab rat, I'm going to kill all your family. How do you feel about that? Which is bad enough when it's a human scientist being pointlessly sadistic, but at least maybe, maybe, you could argue that there's some justification for science, for the pursuit of knowledge that this person doesn't already have. But we're not talking about a human scientist, we're talking about an all-knowing scientist. Al-Alim, the all-knowing. As-Samir, the all-hearing. Al-Basir, the all-seeing. Al-Khabir, the all-aware. As-Shahid, the all-observing. 
what is the excuse for a being with these attributes doing tests of any kind, let alone tests that involve inflicting misery at random on sentient feeling beings? A test, by definition, is a tool for obtaining knowledge, and so any attempt at a justification for why this god would do something like this fails due to his omniscience, and you're left with the problem of evil all over again. Now, is it unresolvable in relation to the Muslim god? Uh, that's for you to tell me. Again, I'm not here to solve the problem of evil for you. I'm just telling you that the it's a test approach isn't going to do it. Because in a way it's all an illusion. It's an illusion. Not really relevant. Whether we live in the Matrix or the God Matrix doesn't change the fact that the suffering itself is not an illusion, even if everything that causes it is. And the suffering is the actual point. That's the root of the problem of evil. So you, in a way you are right that... Uh, there is no evil and there is no good, in the sense that, irrespective of any observer, is there evil and good? No. Because we believe in divine command theory and stuff like that. Oh, wow, okay. So divine command theory is basically a position on the Euthyphro dilemma, which is the dilemma that asks, is it good because the gods say so, or do the gods say so because it's good? And divine command theory is going with the prong that says it's just good because God said so. In other words, people who believe in divine command theory don't believe in objective morality. As this guy says, irrespective of an observer, there is no good or evil. What's good and what's evil is just subjectively determined by some thinking entity. In this case god. So it's just an arbitrary, selective command from this god who could command otherwise. What he commands isn't good or bad in some objective sense, some sense independent of the subjective, changeable position of a being. And the theist who adopts this position decides to abandon his own moral faculties and reasoning, and just treat the word morality as synonymous with in accordance with the dictates of the authority figure. And then it's taken as factually true that these dictates represent correct morality, even though there's no solid, non-subjective reality to morality for those dictates to relate to in such a way that it would actually mean anything to say that the morality is correct. So purely arbitrary, obey the king. I gotta be honest, I'd rather live in a society where people are acting as moral agents who actually use their heads, rather than just following the demands of whoever they think is in charge. Which, let's be real, although they say it's God, is always some human who claims to represent God, or to interpret the words of God. But the point is that, the point I'm actually showing is that, I thought you would think that atheists would solve the problem. You thought atheists would solve your problem. Why? Because people have moral inclinations and they are very strong on some of their, uh, what's it called, views about good and evil, you know? Yes, atheists and theists are very strong on their views about good and evil, yes. But only one of those groups, actually a subset of one of those groups, argues that there's a god who creates and allows evil while being all-powerful and all-knowing and all-good and all-merciful. So only one of those groups has to deal with the problem of evil. Of course I'm referring to your group, so why do you keep saying atheists should resolve this problem? It's not our problem to resolve. That they forget that once you remove... Uh, religion or theism, for instance, what you, what you get is not what you want. <laughs> you get nothing. Okay, what I want or what I get is not relevant to the problem of evil, but I know lots of non-religious people, and they have moral positions, like you just said, and they have reasons for them. What is this nothing you're saying that I get? There's not nothing. I deal with the something every day. I have that something myself. You're saying that without religion, the world should be a way that it demonstrably isn't. You're saying that when people lose religion, they should act in a way that they demonstrably don't. In any case, it doesn't matter. What I want isn't relevant to what's true. If I want something, that's not a reason for me to assume that that's the fact of reality, and therefore I wouldn't believe it. My way of distinguishing fact from fiction, truth from falsehood, is not just to see what I feel like today. It's not like deciding whether I prefer chocolate or vanilla ice cream. Truth is not a matter of taste, and I'm not going to pretend it is for some kind of perceived social benefit. A benefit which, I'll repeat, I don't even think is there in the first place. Now you cannot talk about evil anymore. I'll talk about whatever I want. What's worth talking about is not defined by you command theory. You don't define what's a valid subject of conversation. Or which labels are allowed to be used for categories of human action. Now you cannot talk about evil anymore. 
in a real sense. Oh, in a real sense, whatever that's supposed to mean. Well, in the sense you seem to be thinking of, you don't think evil's real either. You believe in divine command theory. What's good and what's evil is the purely arbitrary command of the tough guy. In divine command theory, there is no objective good or evil. So don't even act like you have some kind of high ground. It was all myths. All of that was myths. Good, evil, it was myths. Mythology. Again, this is not dependent on religion. Yes, if objective good and evil are not real, then they're not real. If they are, then they are, regardless of their origin. And since you mentioned divine command theory, going back to Euthyphro, the only way morality is actually objective is if it's not just the arbitrary command of God. If it's true that it's good or evil, even if God doesn't think so. So if it really is true that good or bad is just the subjective opinion of God, then in that case objective good and evil also are not real. But maybe objective morality is real. That can be the case if there's no God just as much as if there is one. This is a completely separate question from the question of whether there's a God. And in that case, it makes perfect sense to talk about good and evil as objective facts. And they are not mythological. You're trying to paint this as if there's only one option in a universe without a God, but there's not. You would just find it really convenient if that were the case, and so you're insisting on it. Now for my part, yeah, I think objective good and evil are mythological things, or at least ideas that I don't think are factually true. What's your point? Is it just to whine about it? Are you going to tell me that God has to exist and define objective morality for you because you don't like the alternative? Is that the argument? What point are you trying to get me to take from this? But they often hold on to those mythology and they continue as if no one will see them. Atheists often hold on to the mythologies of objective good and evil. Well, sure, the ones who believe in objective good and evil. I don't, so I don't. I, of course, hold on to morality, though, and the moral extremes that come along with it. Morality's a useful tool. It's as real as things like money or love or thinking that you should go on the green light and not on the red one. It's an element of human society so fundamental that it's basically impossible to separate from us as human beings. The idea of humans not having moral positions is almost unfathomable. It's as difficult to imagine as imagining a humanity that doesn't experience hunger, or tiredness, or loneliness, or enjoyment. The idea that without a god it's not valid for humans to perceive things as good or bad is insane. Without a god should people also not see taste as good or bad, relationships as good or bad, art as good or bad, disease or health as good or bad. It's kind of all or nothing, right? You can't accept that we see all these different things as good or bad, but then just pick one random thing and say, you can't see that one as good or bad without a god. Uh, yeah, I can. And I do. Everybody does. It's like an ostrich burying his head in the sand. We see you. Don't you get it? It's like, once you remove god and all of that, whatever you claim to be good and evil anymore, no one will take you seriously. Oh, okay, so I'm supposed to worry about whether the theists take me seriously. What you seem to fail to understand is that I don't take it seriously when you tell me this is good because God said so and this is bad because God said so. You don't take my morality seriously and I don't take yours any more seriously. You can rant and rave about the Quran all day. That's not going to make you seem like a serious person. It's going to make you sound like a chump. Anymore, like, yeah, well, we get it. It's like, you're like an ostrich. Everyone can see you, but you, you seem to think you are... You're hidden from plain sight. I'm right here, man. Oh no, the people I don't take seriously might not take me seriously if I adhere to the truth. Excuse me while I go make a river with my tears. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys get what I'm saying. Like, when they push this problem of evil for you as it is, just say, okay, fine. We believe ultimately this life is a test. And at the end of the day, all those evil and, and good and all those things, they were finite. They are not everlasting. How is that supposed to help you? It's cool that good and evil exist. Yeah, the contradiction with that, with the nature of my god, yeah, not a problem. Because the evils are finite. So, they're non-zero. This is a problem that deals in absolutes. We're dealing with a god whose nature is defined in terms of absolutes. When the correct answer is zero, any answer other than zero is a problem. You don't just get to hand wave it away by going, I don't think it matters that much. It's a small number, relatively speaking. Saying everything is relative isn't going to solve it for you. Saying it's a test isn't going to solve it for you. Complaining about atheist morality isn't going to solve it for you. Anything else? Now the real, <laughs> the real judgment will begin by the one who is in charge of everything. Yes, I'm familiar with the basic claims of the religion. And? And God is going to 
all the people that have been tested with quote unquote evil. Wait, hold on. Quote unquote evil? Okay, is this evil supposed to be real or not? Your big problem with atheists is that we supposedly can't talk about evil in a real sense. Well, quote unquote evil sounds an awful lot like not evil in a real sense. It sounds like evil in some other sense, some figurative sense. What's that about? You will see them enjoying, okay? And all those people that they had good and they were in great, uh, ungrateful, God will punish them. That is our belief. Yeah, I know. I've read the Quran. Believe me, it says that shit enough times that I got the point. That's like half the book is just ejaculating about how wonderful it is that everyone who's not a Muslim is going to get their comeuppance. I don't care. What does this have to do with the problem of evil argument? You've said there's evil. The amount of evil, regardless of how small, is non-zero. Your whole video is about wondering how to resolve this problem. Half your video is about hoping atheists will do it for you. Are you going to get to the point where you actually resolve it? Or are you just going to kind of brush it off and go, well, you know, some people get to go to heaven and the ones I don't like get to go to hell, so it's cool. So this life is a test for us. So you will not, it will not be strange to find someone that is a Muslim, bad things happening to him. God already said it. It's weird to make a Muslim, non-Muslim distinction there. That is not the point. Evil happening to either of them is still evil. But yeah, again, this doesn't address the point. Someone raises a concern about the seeming contradiction between properties of your God, and your response is just, well, you know, God said it'd be that way. Not only is that not a good argument, it's not even an argument on the topic. We're not arguing about whether God made a particular statement. We're arguing about the internal consistency of your God, its coherence. So we, we are not, uh, we see this um, as a, what's it called, musiba. This is like, ah, oh, bad thing happened to me. Okay, I'll, I'll be patient. Okay. Be whatever you want. We're also not arguing about your attitude. We're arguing about an old philosophical problem about the consistency of the description of your God. You keep bringing up irrelevancies. Why did you make a video about the problem of evil if the last thing you seem to want to talk about is the problem of evil? Uh, it's a video in English, you could just say it in English. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna scare you, and starve you, and take your stuff, and your life, and your crops. But don't freak out, be good. If you're not patient, bad stuff's gonna happen. Yeah, it's a sadistic test. And in this case of the problem of evil, the problem isn't just why does God permit evil? The question is why does God constantly inflict it? According to you, this stuff is objectively evil, and God does it himself. That who will test you with all this bad stuff, you lose your crops. Sometimes things are not going smoothly for you. Look, the basic message, divorced from theism, is perfectly fine. This is a real basic version of Stoicism. I saw this meme the other day floating around somewhere. It said something like, Stoicism, life ain't a bitch, you're a bitch. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I can get behind that as an attitude. But again, it doesn't address the problem of evil. You're just talking about some other random crap that has nothing to do with the topic. Give glad tidings to those that are patient. Why? Because they know. There's something else after all of this. Well, that's the implication in the Quran, yeah. But much more fundamentally, the idea is freaking out's not going to help anybody, and things will probably improve eventually. If it's really that bad, it's all uphill from here. Might as well not get too upset about it, just do what you gotta do, get through it. Easier said than done sometimes, but not a terrible message. If you try to say you need religion to think this way, you're just full of it. You don't need the infinite carrot at the end of the stick. But you, as an atheist, there's nothing after all of this. So, it's meaningless. All your suffering, all your evil, quote-unquote evil, is just meaningless. Really? Is that so? Well, then why am I using emotionally loaded words like suffering and evil? Sounds an awful lot like it means something to somebody. Me, for a start. What it means to someone else is their problem. I'm not really interested. What you think it means, what you think it means to God, what you think I should think it means to God, or want it to mean to God, or to you, I couldn't possibly care less. And we, we have hope that all of this will make sense one day. Because we know it doesn't make sense right now. All of this doesn't make any sense unless there's something after. 
It doesn't make any sense, you say. What do you mean, with regard to the problem of evil? All this evil, all this bad stuff in the world, it doesn't make any sense. God wouldn't do that. My God's a good God. So he must have something real good planned for me afterwards. See, I don't need that assumption. To me, all of this makes perfect sense as it is. Bad stuff is not a mystery for me. I don't need to explain it away. I don't have contradictions between parts of my worldview the way you do. I don't need to square the circle the way you do because I don't have a circle to square. You keep wanting to talk as if I'm the one with the problem here, but you're the one who seems to be struggling with this. You have to figure out some reason why you struggle. To me, it's just obvious and expected. And that's how we live in the hereafter. And we, because we believe that, we owe ourselves to that judgment, that we have to behave ourselves. Even if no one is watching me, I have to still behave myself because I know Ultimately, I'm going to be brought to justice. Still off topic, but yeah, I also behave myself when nobody's watching. And the reason is because a society is not its own thing separate from the people within it. It's just an aggregation of a bunch of people trying to get along. And if everybody tries to keep things nice, which includes things like not harming other people in major ways and so on, not attacking them, not robbing them, and so on, it's better for everyone, including the individual. Humans have rationality. We can think about our individual effect upon the group. And this is why, for example, I put my shopping cart away. This is why if the person at the checkout forgets to charge me for something, I'll point it out. This is why I won't pilfer from the bulk bin. Or at least I didn't before they got rid of them all during COVID and never brought them back. Where's my bulk bin? This is why I don't litter on the sidewalk. In fact, this is why I pick up random things I find on the sidewalk and put them in the garbage. I doubt Allah told you much about littering, or shopping carts for that matter. Within my morality, this is required behavior. Is it in yours, or do you only do and not do the things you were explicitly demanded to do or not do by God? Well, whether he told you to or not, do it anyway. Set the example. The fewer people who do it, the fewer people who will. The more people who do it, the more people who will. Be the change you want to see. Don't wait to be ordered to do it. But if you, you don't have this belief of hereafter, no one is going to hold you accountable. Did you forget that I exist? I can hold myself accountable. That's what being a responsible person is. I've never once in my life thought, man, I could really use a threat of eternal punishment to force me to take this shopping cart back. I just do it because it makes obvious sense in maintaining my community, and I don't want some guy to have to run around the parking lot gathering up carts, or to have carts bumping into cars and taking up parking spaces. Are you really so immature that you can't figure this stuff out for yourself? It's really not rocket science. For anything you do, if you are alone, you can do whatever you like really. You just don't understand it yet. I understand perfectly well what I can and cannot get away with. The decisions I make are not based on some calculation of whether I'll get caught. What an absolutely ridiculous standard. Look, I gotta tell you something, man. Growing up is the process of realizing that although you can eat all the cookies, you still don't want to, even if it might taste good. You start to think about things in a broader context. You no longer need mummy and daddy there to tell you not to eat two entire boxes of cookies for supper. Some people do, they understand this and they throw themselves into an existential crisis. Okay, insane. Sounds like those people have a little bit of work to do on themselves. Because too much freedom sometimes can, can kill you. <laughs> too much freedom can make you realize that. What? What what? Like the existentialists, just read some of their works. People like Sartre and all these people, you will see that they tell you you are ultimately free. What does that even mean? Go and see, and you see that you will start looking for meaning somewhere. You will create your own mythology to deal with this issue. Okay, so just to get this straight, I'm sitting here perfectly fine, perfectly well-adjusted, seeing meaning in the things I do, the things I am surrounded by, behaving myself when I'm on my own for rational reasons. And so you're recommending me books that you hope will throw me off balance, make me feel ill at ease in this world that I currently feel fine in, to make me understand that the only valid approach to life is to be a miserable fuck. Or to be religious, of course. You're not recommending me books that will, for example, present arguments addressing the problem of evil to resolve that conflict. You're not recommending me books to argue in favor of the truth of the claims of Islam. You're not recommending me books to argue against the possibility of an atheistic universe. You're not recommending me anything to address my intellectual concerns. You're recommending me books that you hope will appeal to my emotions, that you hope will make me feel the way you want me to feel about the world. Well, ain't that cute. So anyway, I hope you guys, anytime someone comes with you with the problem of evil and all this nonsense stuff, just 
Say, say, I don't care. <laughs> cool, fine by me. Less I have to deal with if you just kind of acknowledge that you got nothing and go, yeah, I don't care. Great, I'm happy. Because ultimately, they don't care. Why are they then using the arguments? I think they just want to show that God doesn't exist so that all of us will now be uh, nihilist and all of us will not believe there's good and evil ultimately anymore and everything will just become nonsense. Or I just think you're wrong and I want you to see that you're factually wrong because, you know, truth is cool. I know this whole video you've been arguing that truth doesn't matter and all that matters is your feelings and your consequences and stuff like that, uh, but I don't care about any of that. I care what's true first and foremost. And I'm gonna argue for it whether you like it or not. I don't care if you change your mind, you don't matter to me. I don't even know you. If you want to keep your god and your supposedly ultimate good and evil that cannot be ultimate because it's just whatever god says it is, go nuts. I don't care. Probably nobody else does either. But we, we hold on to that mythology that will make evil and good, uh, and good real. Oh, okay, so you're just knowingly saying you believe whatever bullshit makes you feel good. Well, that's just lovely. But in that case, why would you go with divine command theory? Why wouldn't you go with the other horn of the Euthyphro Dilemma where God likes it because it's good? That's the one with the ultimate good and evil. You picked the wrong one. In the sense that it's a test for us. The Zoom job that they are just there, they are a test for you. You will be tested with good. Will you, will you share out of your goodness? Would you be grateful? You're tested with evil. Would you remember when things were good? Would you be patient? That's all the test. And then ultimately you'll be rewarded for all your patience. Okay? Look, does any of this matter at this point? You told me this is a mythology that you choose to believe because it makes good and evil real. That's pretty much just openly stating that you don't care whether it's true. In which case, it's no wonder that you didn't bother to actually address the problem of evil as an argument. It's no wonder that the whole way through this video you've been talking about the feelings instead of anything resembling a relevant argument. And now you're repeating yourself again, and I don't know what you think it's going to accomplish. You shot yourself down with that mythology crap. And those that didn't do this, they'll be punished. Simple. Simple, yeah. Incredibly simplistic. But do you actually believe this is what will happen? Or do you just pretend it is because you find it useful, like you said before? In which case, where is the force behind this? It sounds like even you, the supposedly true believer, don't even think it's actually true. You just think it's useful for manipulating people. Why would anyone fear the Hellfire if the Hellfire is just a myth? Evil does not exist ultimately, according to them. Or according to your ideas, despite your protests. So there's nothing to go back to. Do you understand? Like Nietzsche said, if you remove all mythology, there's nothing left. It's just a colorless world, a colorless blind world that anyone can just come and paint whatever they want, ultimately. Well, it's a good thing I don't give a flying fuck about what Nietzsche said. These arguments about the supreme importance of mythology are really popular again. I can't say I ever found any of them compelling. Get your head out of the clouds and just use it. To me, it's not a, an argument that any teens should worry themselves about. about. Unless you, your own, uh, you don't have this kind of concrete. That's why we invite you to Islam, you see? We have an explanation for all these things. Yeah, apparently you made up a mythology that makes you feel good about it. Not very compelling. I mean, it was pretty transparent already what Islam really is. But you just took the mask off completely in this one. And that's totally why you invite me to Islam, yeah. Just to offer explanations for reality, nothing more. Right. Really, <laughs> our scholars have dealt with this for years. And we can explain to you how all this ultimately makes sense. Yeah, what's funny is it already does make sense. At least all the stuff we've been talking about in this video. Who needs you? You haven't even touched on anything that's vaguely confusing. To do that, you'd have to touch on like the deepest mysteries of physics and cosmology. And even then, the best your scholars would have to offer is a shrug. I'm sure followed by another demand to join the religion. Sorry, Mr. Mythology Salesman, I don't need any. And now we can still be moral and good and have hope in the hereafter. We're Justice will be served. All right, have fun with that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you would be so kind before you go, please do give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. And if you really like the channel, consider supporting. A couple bucks per video or per month is enormously helpful and huge thanks to everyone who's already made that choice. For early access, email list, list.logic.com, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>